Hey, hello and welcome. Uh, thanks for having me today. I know it's the last talk of the day. Uh, please don't fall asleep. Um, so this talk is for everyone who speaks more than one language, which is probably everyone in here. Um, today I want to explore uh, some of the available options uh, out there to create multilingual WordPress websites and what it would take to build these capabilities right into WordPress core. So for those who don't know me yet, uh, my name is Pascal and I somehow ended up doing lots of internationalization stuff uh, in WordPress. I'm a WordPress core committer and as you mentioned, I'm currently working on Google's, so basically the Google's WordPress uh, team. And you can find me on Twitter at um, Swiss Speedy or Swiss Spidey, where I will uh, share the link to my slides later. So before we jump right into this topic, uh, I first want to talk about the backstory of this. Um, so as I mentioned, I've been very active in the uh, internationalization area in WordPress uh, for quite some time now. Um, but why am, am I giving this presentation about multilingual websites now? Um, it's not, I'm not here just because I like Vienna. Um, it's because something happened. Uh, during last year's uh, State of the World keynote by uh, WordPress co-founder Matt Mullenweg, he announced that uh, the next phase, or one of the next phases, phase four of Gutenberg, uh, would focus on developing an official way uh, for WordPress to support multilingual websites. Uh, that was a big announcement, uh, as no such plans existed in the past. Um, and even now, there are no technical details yet uh, for what approach, uh, what approach Core will take, as it's still a long way off. Um, in his keynote, actually, Matt mentioned that Gutenberg Phase 4 uh, is targeted for uh, the year 2020 and beyond. And given that we are still in Phase 2 of Gutenberg, where widgets are slowly being converted to blocks, 2020 is probably a bit too optimistic for that. Um, but still, people uh, already started to speculate about the impact of Core offering its um, own standardized solution for multilingual sites and what that solution might look like. And today, we are going to speculate as well. So this uh, new commitment to multilingual websites uh, kind of makes sense for WordPress when you think about it. Almost every CMS or open source CMS or platform out there already has multilingual cap capabilities. Um, WordPress is the only one uh, without. And if WordPress doesn't, fall, uh, doesn't want to fall behind the competition and reach more users around the globe, it needs to do something about it. Um, the good thing is WordPress actually is already multilingual, at least in some way. Um, it has not completely fallen behind or anything. Uh, WordPress has a strong international community and some powerful multilingual features. Um, so let's have a closer look at WordPress internalization for a little bit. First of all, I'd like to point out that uh, WordPress has been caring about other languages than just American English uh, for a long time already. So in version 1.2, uh, WordPress added support for internalization and localization. So that was 15 years ago. Um, and despite there not being that many international contributors to WordPress at, at that point, um, the mostly English-speaking people there recognized the importance of such a feature and that allows translating WordPress into uh, any language one wants to. Um, so currently WordPress uh, can be uh, translated into over 100 or like even 200 locales. And many of these translations uh, are complete. Uh, others need more contributors, so if you download the translation for, uh, for example, my favorite language, Romance, uh, an official Swiss language, it's like 30% complete. But you can translate it. Um, I'm not aware of any other open source CMS that has that many uh, active translations. Um, plus, these are not only translations for WordPress itself, but also for plugins, themes, and uh, even the mobile apps of WordPress can be translated into these languages. This is also reflected uh, in the statistics available on WordPress.org. Uh, these show that the majority of WordPress sites are not in US English. Um, so that's a lot of sites. If you think about it, the WordPress is like powering millions of websites around the globe. 
Um, and that's why we're always trying to improve English, uh, sorry, trying to improve WordPress for non-English speakers. Uh, one example, a rather recent one in that history, uh, we added a feature to WordPress that allows uh, every user on your website uh, to choose their own preferred language when, when uh, working with WordPress. So it's not just one language anymore that WordPress can be used uh, in, but actually many languages at the same time. Um, but this, of course, only affects the WordPress user interface and not the content of your website. But what about multilingual content? Well, every time this has been brought up in the past, um, one will be told that it's not something that is of importance um, at the moment. It's not needed by most users, or it's not as easy to do because WordPress is so complex. And most famously, you have been told that it's plugin territory. Just install a plugin for that. Um, the idea behind that is uh, quite simple. It's that WordPress core itself should be um, small and lean, and everything else should be handled by plugins. And that's what the plugin ecosystem is there for. Um, at least that's the thinking. Nevertheless, um, there have been some efforts in the past to make WordPress a true multilingual <laughs> CMS. Uh, I'm briefly going to highlight some of them. First, uh, there was Babel. Uh, not to be confused with the JavaScript transpiler called Babel. Uh, Babel was a WordPress plugin developed by an agency called Code for the People, like six or seven years ago. Um, its main selling point was that it's using built-in uh, functionality, and at the time, it was the only working, uh, the only one working well on WordPress.com VIP, which uh, caught the interest of Automatic. So the agency has been acquired by Automatic around five years ago, and the plugin was discontinued after that. So it's no longer an option. Um, next, there was uh, this proposal by fellow WordPress enthusiast Kasper Hubinger from Germany. He figured that if a complete multilingual website solution would be too big of a task for, or too big of an undertaking for WordPress, there should be at least like the absolute minimum, a field where you can just declare the language a post has been written in, just a simple select box. Um, and this proposal actually gained some momentum among core contributors and inspired more people to look at multilingual WordPress again. So this was like four years ago, and um, it led to, to some very active discussions at the WordCamp Europe 2015 in Seville. And a working group has been formed to look into uh, the requirements and hurdles for multilingual support in WordPress. As you might be able to see on, on the screenshot here, uh, the last post on that block was from November 2015. So unfortunately, that momentum didn't last long. But there were certainly some interesting ideas being um, shared there, which might be picked up again in the future. Uh, so one of the suggestions was to add new columns to the database tables um, to spe specify the language for a post or term, just for better performance and like actual built-in multilingual capability. Let's uh, take a step back real quick and ask ourselves, like, what would multilingual support in WordPress look like if we could build it from scratch? Um, after all, WordPress is a massive project, and there's a lot of things to consider when, when doing that. But if you have a like, blank canvas, um, there would be no limits. So what's needed? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we start with the most, imp most important piece of content to post. One needs to be able to translate posts and pages and, and other content types in whatever language they like. Um, there also needs to be an easy way to edit the current uh, post in another language and to have like, a connection between the translation. Uh, and the same goes for categories and tags and uh, any other content type editable in WordPress, really. Next, you perhaps want to translate some posts with lots of visual elements. Uh, but you don't want to upload all the images twice. So there would be like some intelligent functionality to kind of share the same images between uh, posts, but you still need to like have translated image captions, for example. 
And with the new block editor, everything WordPress um, is going to be a block in the future. Um, so newsletter widget, a block. Custom navigation menu, a block. And this should be translatable as well. So this needs to be accounted for too. And then, of course, you need to have like a way to have like different URLs for each translation so that your website is going to be like example.com slash de slash whatever. And that's like for SEO and usability reasons. Um, and they need to be linked to each other so that you can easily navigate to another language of the, another translation of the current post. And of course, this all needs to be fast. Um, activating multilingual support should not suddenly slow down your site uh, despite there being added complexity. And optimizing for that already starts at the database layer and continues through the, to the presentation layer of a website, like your theme. Um, usability. Multilingual support should not negatively impact the content writing experience. Um, ideally, it's barely noticeable. What if you want to hire an, uh, an external agency that translates your content, like actual professionals that know a language that you don't? So there should be some kind of API that they can uh, get existing content from your site and ideally directly publish translations from their own systems. And in the end, you just have to put all the pieces together, connecting the dots. So you will end up with a multilingual solution um, that is not just fast, but also very easy to use and basically leaves no questions unanswered. Uh, so no matter if you're like a personal blogger or like small business or like a huge corporation with offices around the world, um, you can just use WordPress, it just works. Now you might have realized that sounds a bit unrealistic, kind of utopic. Um, we cannot build WordPress from scratch, uh, but instead we have to work with what we've already got. Um, so let's have a look at what we can actually do at this very moment. For, so for this, I uh, picked five different WordPress plugins that allow you to turn your site into a multilingual one. <laughs> one of them is uh, Qtranslate Translate or Qtranslate Translate X. Uh, it is one of the oldest, oldest plugins out there for multilingual WordPress sites. Uh, unfortunately, it has been pretty much abandoned by its uh, developer, so with no updates in over three years. Um, however, there's a successor called Qtranslate Translate XT, I think. It's like a community project that aims to revive the original project and maintain its compatibility with, with the latest updates of WordPress. The problem with Qtranslate is, uh, is that all the translated content is stored in the same post, like the same text field, basically. And that doesn't scale. Uh, it doesn't scale with blocks at all. Um, so it's not compatible with the new block editor, so you still have to use the old editor if you want to use Qtranslate. So my recommendation is like, please look at other options. One such option is called Polylang. Um, it is one of my personal favorites and also one of the most popular multilingual plugins out there with over 400,000 active installs. Uh, Polylang uses separate posts for translations and uses taxonomies to link uh, these translations together, which I think is a really neat way of doing that uh, with the, within the boundaries of WordPress. And compared to Qtranslate, the UI of Pololang is much cleaner. Um, you can see the regular block editor here, and only in the sidebar in the corner there, you have a small box where you can manage the translations and change the language of the current post. Um, that's the kind of usability you'd want to see in WordPress for multilingual stuff. Besides Pololang and Qtranslate, um, there's also WPML. Uh, it's a paid solution, and it tries to cover almost every aspect of dealing with languages uh, within WordPress. And it's probably as old as Qtranslate. So that means it grew a lot over time and it's now quite heavy weighted. Uh, it uses a lot of custom database tables and workarounds for uh, core limitations. Multilingual Press is another contender in the field. And it just recently published a new completely refactored version. And while previous versions have been partially free, this one is a paid solution as well. Um, interestingly, multilingual press uses uh, the multi-site capabilities of WordPress to turn your site into a multilingual one. 
Uh, this is a very neat approach because multi-site um, gives you a lot of additional powers within WordPress. Um, it might be a bit overwhelming though, because like it could be too much if you just want to have like um, just want to translate a few posts here and there. Um, but in case you are building websites on WordPress.com uh, VIP, for example, this is their actually recommended solution um, at the moment. Uh, the last one I want to mention is Weglot. Um, they're actually a sponsor of this very WordCamp here. Uh, they haven't been around for that long, yet they already have like 20,000 active installs on WordPress.org, I think. Uh, what makes Weglot so different from, from all the others? It's uh, software as a service that aims to translate all your content automatically or using professional uh, translation services. Um, and because it's a software as a service, it's not just for WordPress, it's for other platforms as well. And because it's an external service, if you install the plugin, all you need to do is basically enter your API key and uh, set the languages that you want to support. Um, but because everything else happens uh, on their servers, it's not really a solution that could be implemented or like integrated into WordPress core. So if you try to categorize these or you want to compare these five plugins, uh, we can broadly use four terms to categorize them. Uh, first, we have the customized approach and the WordPress way. Uh, Weglot is far away from using the WordPress functionality as all the translation stuff is being handled on an external platform. On the other hand, we have Polylang and Multilingual Press as examples of using native WordPress functionality like taxonomies and multi-site. And second, we have like the automated way, like Weglot, um, unless you have like uh, unless you hire professional translators for you. And the other plugins also allow you to hire um, external translators, but their whole selling point is that they enable you to translate your content. So having explored uh, these existing solutions and the things we want to see in an ideal solution. Um, let's slow down and think about what's really uh, or what's actually realistic. Given the sheer amount of requirements for a multilingual solution and seeing the differences of the existing plugins, uh, it has become clear that there's no one size fits all solution. There's no uh, multilingual Swiss army knife for WordPress. So whatever we end up adding to WordPress um, needs to be small and flexible enough that it works for many users out of the box, but for any extra wishes, you should be able um, to extend it and maybe like install another plugin that builds on top of that. Another thing to be considered is backward compatibility. Uh, we cannot risk adding multilingual functionality to WordPress and breaking lots of sites by doing that. So we need to do it in a way that is both backward and compatible and also future proof in case we want to iterate on that. Uh, later. And for anyone who knows the code base of WordPress and how old it is, um, you know that this is not going to be a trivial undertaking. So because WordPress cannot have a one-size-fits-all solution, it needs to implement it in such a way that themes and plugins can easily interact with it. Um, Years ago, that would just mean like adding some hooks and filters in, in the code base for developers to extend solutions. But nowadays, it's, WordPress is way more complex. We have a REST API now. Uh, we have a block editor. Everything's going to be a block. Um, and it means any extensibility needs a way more thorough thinking than just adding some filters here and there. So at this point, uh, we're left wondering what's next. Um, when is this coming? When can you have multilingual WordPress websites out of the box? How can I help? How can I get involved? So the short answer is the time hasn't come yet. Um, as I mentioned before, phase four of Gutenberg has been planned for 2020 and beyond. Uh, before that, the focus is fully on site customization and further improving Gutenberg. Uh, no work has yet begun on multilingual support. Um, however, it is important to keep in mind uh, with the current, like to keep in keep it in mind with the current development, so uh, just keep it like in your back of your head. And as the things we build today uh, affect what we what and how we can build things uh, tomorrow. 
Many people, um, including, of course, uh, the folks behind Multilingual Press, have mentioned that they see WordPress multi-site as the ideal solution for this endeavor. And since multi-site is already a powerful part of WordPress that is supported by th both themes and plugins, it might be worth looking into how we can, uh, how it could be utilized for multilingual sites by default, but with like hiding all the complexity that is associated with multi-site. Um, so we need to find a way to utilize it for translations. Um, it's going to be very interesting. So if you're interested in this exciting new chapter uh, of WordPress, I highly recommend you to get involved in making your voice heard today. Uh, even though work hasn't yet, has yet to start, now is a great time to get involved with the community and get yourself familiar with the code and uh, com contributing to WordPress core and the current phases of Gutenberg development. Uh, all the current multilingual plugin developers out there are already looking forward to this as well, as it means they will be able to greatly simplify their code bases and they can offer a much improved experience for their users. If there's any progress on multilingual WordPress, uh, you will likely hear it first on make.wordpress.org, or especially make.wordpress.org slash core, and also on WordPress Slack. Uh, you can also be pretty sure that I will tweet about any developments in that area. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Pascal. Um, any questions? <coughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, I, li I really like... Wait, can, oh, sorry, sorry, we have... didn't hear that down there. Is a fallback, right? Or if German do is a fallback for the German C, because otherwise you always end up with a mixed English and German version. Is this something you would consider in the future? <laughs> very good point. German is a very complex language in that regard, with the, with the formal and informal stuff. Uh, the good thing is, I'm um, developing a plugin that allows you to set different fallbacks. Um, for your language. So you can have like formal German as the default and whenever that is not available, it'll pick the informal one. And you could even have like, I don't know, Spanish as another fallback if you want. Um, so this is currently in development and should be in core at some point that you can do this like right out, out, out of the box. So, so that multi-site approach you were talking about, I, I think that's a really good idea. The question I have is how well do those multi-site plugins that use that approach work when you have an actual multi-site that you want to translate? Good question. Um, so the good thing is, or like uh, with everything, make, but it makes everything a bit more complex. You can have a multi-site with different sites and each site can be a multi-site on its own again. So you can have like a multi-site that is translated and it can still be like uh, like networks of networks kind of thing. Um, depending of actual implementation of how that's going to look like, it's like still open and how good the support is going to be, we'll see. And you don't know how that works with the plugins that are currently out there, do you? Well, the problem is like, I would say many plugins would just work but there's just too many plugins and not all of them are really well written. So there's always going to be some breakage. Thanks. Awesome. More Any more questions? questions? Over there. Uh, thanks for a great uh, presentation. Uh, just a quickly, uh, maybe I missed it from the talk, but you're a developer. Uh, what would you personally at this moment think would be the best uh, approach or at least the starting point for, for doing this? So if you want to build a multilingual website today with WordPress? No, no, no. Or 
No, uh, to like uh, creating multilingual WordPress in a core. Right. Like, w how would you approach it? Uh, multilingual web well in the front end should not be like that big of a difference should look the same as always it just have like a language navigation uh, it mostly affects like the content writing like the back end part of, of WordPress right Shall I go back to, uh, so for example, this is how editing in, in Polylang looks like. Um, so ideally, really, if you edit content uh, with a plugin, you just set the translate, like the language of your post, and on the front end, there should be no difference at all. Uh, the only thing that is important is that in the code, it's highlighted that this is like written in Spanish or something that uh, browsers and search engines understand, but on the front end, it like shouldn't have no impact at all. Sorry, can we? Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, but what I meant is like, how would you approach it? Would you look uh, you you personally like use multi-site? Would you use additional tables, columns? This is what I meant. Uh, well, uh, as I said, it's like a, a trade-off. Like ideally, we'll have like changing the database tables in WordPress, but it's going to be hard to not break anything. So the multi-site approach is really like worth looking into. Um, but I also like the way how Polylang does it with the taxonomies, because it's also WordPress functionality. And the plugin has proven that it works by not breaking too many other plugins. Um, it really depends on your use case. Multi-site multi is also really interesting when you have like um, websites for like different countries where it not only affects the content, but also like um, you have like other content that is only specific to that country, which is way easier for multi-site. And you can also just say uh, user A only has access for the German, Germany website and not uh, everything else. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, do you have any experience handling uh, multiple languages, left to right and right to left in the meantime? You mean in, in the content editing? For, for well, my website is, for example, displaying English and Hebrew. OK, so there's for right to left languages like Hebrew, there's um, a lot of things to consider. Um, <laughs> obviously, like everything is flipped. I, I know that Gutenberg has some support for right to left languages, but it's not perfect yet. And especially the UI can be a bit tricky. If you're a developer and want to have like a theme that fully supports right to left languages, um, one, one thing I really like is called RTL CSS. So that is like a, a script or like a, something that you can integrate in your process. And basically it takes your CSS and wherever there's like float left, it turns it into float right. So it's like the opposite for these languages. Um, that is really cool. Uh, so it takes a lot of work off your shoulders as a developer. More questions? One last question, maybe. Everyone's looking forward to the after party already. Oh, two for one. Awesome. Well, oh, hey. Uh, so at this moment of time, from a user point of view, which uh, of the tools or, or plugins that you mentioned would you actually recommend? Well, I can say Weglot because they're here. Uh, <laughs> so I, I've used, I think most of the times in, in the past, I, I've used Polylang because it's very simple and the user interface is super easy. Uh, multilingual press, not that much because like a, it was a paid solution and might be too much if you're just like a, have a small website that needs to be translated. But as soon as there's like more complexity, you should be looking into something like that. Um, really depends on the use case. Okay. Last one. Really the last, last, last one. <laughs> last, Bye -bye. last question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you.